up heavy rain quickly turns roads into streams in Custer. And reopening Minnesota businesses, what one community is doing to entice people to do a little shopping. Good morning, this is Kevin Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Heavy rainfall caused flash flooding in southern Kingsbury County last night. The Kingsbury County Sheriff's Office posted these pictures to their Facebook page. The post also says water filled ditches and flowed over roads. These pictures were taken three to five miles south of Iroquois. The Sheriff's Office also asked people to not drive through flooded roads. And if you have pictures of the weather in your area, we would like to see them. You can send them to you, share at kelloland.com. No, it's not winter time in Custer. This is a result of a major hailstorm that swept through the city. After experiencing dry weather at fire dangerous levels, the city was under a severe thunderstorm watch with pea sized hail, along with flooding for some people like Miranda Boggs. Well, the water um, pushed all of our decorative rock, landscape rock, down into our drive through, so then the water couldn't flow like it needs to, and so it was starting to come back by our door and into our building. Boggs and a friend worked to clear a path for the water to flow normally. Turning to weather now, the heat and humidity of yesterday was replaced by rain in parts of Kelloland last night. Let's find out how much rain fell with meteorologist Scott Munt. Oh, well, we had rainfall amounts of one to two inches from Brookings, the Huron, and those isolated areas uh, near Iroquois. We had some rainfall estimates of around five to seven. And in Custer, we had about an inch of rainfall. Unfortunately, that came with some hail and it all came at once, too, dealing with some. Uh, flooding into that area as well. Well, as we go through this weekend, mainly dry, and I say mainly dry because there's that isolated chance for shower or thunderstorm as we do go into Sunday. Hot and humid next week, storms around midweek as well. More details on the Kettle Land Live Doppler forecast coming up. Thanks, Scott. On Thursday, the wildfire at Custer State Park was about 60 acres versus what was estimated Wednesday at 150 acres. There were, one, there were 117 firefighters on scene with additional resources. Two helicopters and one air attack plane were used on the fire. The park itself remained open. However, several areas inside the park were closed off to take precautions. Officials say the fire is 100% contained. As Sioux Falls police investigate the death of one missing person, they're still looking for another. 48-year-old Nima Sherpa hasn't been seen since June 13th. Police say they still don't have any leads in the search and are pleading to, help to the public for help. Investigators have been focusing on a neighborhood near the east side Walmart. He lived in that area and he would frequently walk to the store and back and he just never returned home. Sherpa is described as 5 feet tall and weighs 120 pounds. If you have any information, you're asked to call Sioux Falls Police. Yesterday marked one month since George Floyd died while in police custody under the knee of an officer in Minneapolis. Thursday afternoon, about two dozen people gathered at Van Epps Park in Sioux Falls for a Black Lives Matter protest demanding change within law enforcement and an end to systemic racism. The South Dakota Health Department says three more people have died in the state due to COVID-19. That brings the total number of deaths to 87 since the pandemic started. The number of active cases also went back up to 800. However, nearly 5,600 people have recovered from the virus. The Health Department also confirmed its first case of multi-system inflammatory syndrome. The state epidemiologist says the person is under the age of 18 but won't release which county they live in. National studies say there may be a link between the condition and COVID-19. As the pandemic continues, South Dakota hopes to test about 44,000 people per month. That's about 5% of the population. So how close are state health officials to reaching that goal? You can find out under this Kelloland.com original that's on our website right now. Businesses in Minnesota are making adjustments as they reopen after being closed to the pandemic. In Worthington, the city is encouraging customers to shop at local businesses with a reopening celebration. The three-day event started Thursday and runs through Saturday. It's something business owners like Jennifer Solt is looking forward to. It's just encouraging all over. It really is. Like, yes, we're having this three-day event just to kind of let everybody know in the surrounding communities we're still here and we're out and about and we're open. The Worthington Area Chamber of Commerce's Retail Committee is coordinating the event. Some businesses are also offering deals for customers who wear the city's Worthington Strong t-shirt. Scott? And in weather, as we do jump into the weekend, our first slide here is for tomorrow. We'll be on the backside of high pressure. 
which means southerly winds will eventually start to uh, get in here. And we'll see some wind gusts near 20 miles per hour in the central and western South Dakota. This will happen with sunshine and warm temperatures and then downright hot on Sunday. Temperatures into the 90s. This will happen with stronger southerly winds where we can see wind gusts over 40 in central South Dakota. In the meantime, today with our decrease in cloud cover, we'll have highs in the low to middle 80s. It will be hot and humid as we go through next week, and you can go ahead and check the seven-day forecast while you're here online. Thanks, Scott, and thanks for joining us for Kelloland on the go. Be sure to join us on air for midday in Kelloland. Until then, you can get up to the minute developments right here on Kelloland.com. Now go have a great day.